statement? The boys tell me I did a couple of murders. Anything in it? I think you better let me have it. Bring in your book. I hadn't been in my office that night with my brain cells playing hide-and-seek with those dizzy flashes down the street. I'd have never got messed up with a stolen jade necklace. I've never hired a detective before. What are the rates? As much as the traffic will bear. When can you start? I've already started. Well, this looked like something to rub your palms about. But my client's lovely stepdaughter had other ideas. What did she ask you to do? She wanted me to kiss her and find a jade necklace. Whatever she was willing to pay you, I'll up it. Just stay away from it. Forget the whole thing. It sounded screwy, but it's a funny thing. I always follow through on a sale, even if it pays dividends and a broken skull. I didn't see what hit me. I didn't have to. The first thing I knew, I found myself heaped on a bed like a bag of bones ready for the scrap heap. My throat was dry. My hands felt like a bunch of bananas. I couldn't stand on my pen. Okay, I said to myself, you're a tough guy. Let's see you get out of this straitjacket. Help! Help! Welcome to Movie Umpers. My name is Bob Sham. I'm Angela. And uh, all month long, we are discussing classic film noir five days a week, every weekday. We're calling it the Left Hand Endeavor. And every Monday, Philip Marlowe Mondays. And today, last week we talked about The Big Sleep. Mm -hmm. The iconic Humphrey Bogart performance alongside Lauren Bacall. This week, we are discussing uh, Edward Dimitrix adaptation of farewell my lovely starring dick powell from 1944 it is murder my sweet and what's interesting about murder my sweet is that this is actually the first on-screen film depiction of philip marlowe this one is also kind of on the ground floor of being credited to helping launched the popularity of film noir as well along, oh yeah alongside double indemnity yes. and when we watch and now Full disclosure, it may not matter to the listener, uh, but we watched this movie and then we left town for like three days. Yes. And now we're just now coming back to discuss it. And much like The Big Sleep, the plot here is kind of wild and all over the fucking place. Yeah. I had to read the synopsis like four times here after sitting through it. And you can't help, because we watched The Big Sleep, you can't help but kind of compare the Philip Marlowe's. I mean, Bogey is iconic. He's definitely got a little more swag than Dick Powell, but Dick Powell does kind of have the good verbiage. He has, he does have a decent delivery. He's not a bad Marlowe at all. Not at all. I love him. But it also stars Claire Trevor and Shirley. And, uh, and much like, uh, we will just, dis- this won't be the first professional wrestler actor we'll talk about this month. Another professional wrestler actor will come in later, but we got a guy named Mike Mazurki who plays Moose. And apparently Mike is a, he studied law. He was an attorney, though he's a big oafish dude. So all the movies he was cast in, he was playing a dumbass and he plays a thorough dumbass in this one. He really does. That, that is surprising to me because that he's a lawyer only because He's when you just said he was a wrestler, that made so much sense. And and that tracks through time. The majority of wrestlers in movies are this character. Yeah. You know, there's been a few that have kind of gone out of outside of the mold. The professional wrestler actor in the movie we'll talk about later is actually depicted as smart. Oh, yeah. Which is kind of a, a different. But apparently, uh, Mazurki. But he, he's a heavy. But yeah, he quit law. 
because professional wrestling paid better. And sure. the dude was over six feet tall. So back then, if you were over six feet tall, they'd be like, you know, you can make money being a wrestler. And he's a very intimidating dude. It didn't even matter if you were a decent a- athlete. But back then, he was a decent athlete. Sure. He was like a football player and everything as well. You can tell he's strong. But that's kind of where the movie starts. I mean, Marlo is, uh, his eyes are bandaged up. We don't know why. Nuh-uh. And the police, we assume the police bandaged it up at first for whatever reason and they're interrogating him and he's like fine i'll tell you this very convoluted story i honestly thought it was a blindfold yeah I kind think, of well that yeah that's what we were led to believe yeah but that's not what we discover why he was wearing it no totally you're so i think you're supposed to think it was just a blindfold okay and not an injury right okay you, uh, well, at one point, assume. he they says, don't when can anything. I take this off? And one of the cops goes, in about three months. <laughs> Which is when I was like, well, something's wrong with his eyes. Oh, okay. So they did say that, but I don't know when. because we. You know. I watched this four days ago. <laughs> I'm going to have a hard time. And this plot is convoluted, much like our Chandler plots have been so far. Yes, and I love Marlo's attitude, which is basically, arrest me or let me go. I'll tell you whatever. I didn't fucking do it. What do you need? But he won't talk unless he's talking to his guy that he trusts. Well, he starts to tell a story about a guy named Moose who hires him to go find his girlfriend named Velma. Mm -hmm. And Moose is, he's a big dumbass oaf. But I kind of like call him a galoot. But I kind of like him like instantly. I seen your name on a blackboard downstairs. Yeah? I come up to see you. You're a private eye, huh? That's right. I don't know. I like that character. Oh, yeah. And so to go search for Velma, he goes to this nightclub where he is told that she worked at. And he meets... Eight years ago. And he meets, yeah, a long fucking time. And he meets this woman who's the kind of woman you don't see very much in these kind of film noirs. Cause all the women you meet are usually like these stunner dames or like, or like feisty gals yeah. or whatever. Um, but yeah, she's like an older woman. A drunk. Who, uh, and she, yeah, she's very unique for movies at this time. We don't really see a lot of these old messy women. I should not have sit here and barber with you, but. When I like a guy and he buys me a drink, the ceiling's a limit. <laughs> Hold on to your chair and don't step on those snakes. Like it's this. funny, though, because he, he goes to her house. And not only is she drunk, which we find out she might not be as drunk as she's playing up. Because she doesn't really want to give him any info. She's straight up lying the whole she's time. She's also, like, in a white t-shirt and a man's robe. Like, she just looks so disheveled. He went to her house because he couldn't get any info at the freaking bar because Moose started beating everybody up. Because he he doesn't... It's like he has a memory problem. Mm-hmm. Because one minute, he'll say something and he'll ask you the same question over and over again. And if he doesn't like you, you think maybe it's because he doesn't like your answer, but then it's like you truly don't remember. Because at one point, he grabs Marlo, and Marlo has to be like, dude, I'm the one you hired. I am here with you. Whiskey. Come on, pal. Eight years is a lot of gin. They don't know anything about Velma here. Who asked you to stick your face in? You did. Remember me? I'm the guy who came in with you, Chunky. Moose. The name is Moose. Kind of, I'm large. Moose Malloy. You heard of me, maybe. Maybe. Moose might be the dumbest character we've ever discussed in a movie. And we've actually watched like six different movies where people have intellectual disabilities. (laughs) Oh, that's true. Moose is like throwing money around, but he obviously just got out of jail for eight years. And he's looking for Velma because he's obsessed with her. And... When Marlo goes to visit Jesse Florian, who's like the wife of the man who used to own the bar, he she acts like she's trying to hide this photo from him. It's a great distraction. It's so good because you think she's trying to hide this photo, but she's like kind of drunk and he sees it and he goes and gets it. He steals it. He steals it and it says like, with love, Velma. Yeah. So you assume this brunette 
foxy lady in this photo is Velma. Yeah. So, and then when he's leaving, he sees her, like, making a phone call. Like, she seems like she doesn't, she's not very mobile. And then he sees through the window. She just stands up and goes to make a phone call. Yep. Not quite as drunk as she let on. This guy named Lindsay Marriott meets with Marlo. And he hires him to recover some jewels. And yes, they go a to, necklace. And they go to this job. And Lindsay's hiding in the back. And then Marlo's going to... I forget what exactly they're going to do. Marlo's going to pretend to be him because he's supposed to go alone. I caught the blackjack right behind my ear. A black pool opened up at my feet. I dived in. It had no bottom. I felt pretty good. Like an amputated leg. But Marlo gets clubbed in the back of the head. And then he wakes up to a lady shining a flashlight in his face. And then she's like... When she sees that he's up and runs off, we don't see it on camera because it's Hayes Code, of course. But Marriott has been beaten to death by the blackjack. Yeah, we just see like a rumpled up not- coat. Philip Marlowe has to have some serious CTE damage. He's like, he, I think he gets clocked in the head at least twice. In this movie. Multiple times. I yeah. Do- I think he got clocked in the big sleep, too, because he ends up. Getting hogtied and interrogated. He makes a comment in this one at some point about how many times he's been hit in the head. He's going to be dumber than Moose if he keeps taking these cases. Right. And so Florian's dead. And of course he's like, well, I fucking botched it. I didn't protect the guy. I didn't get the jewels. The money's gone. Mm. And because there was like an envelope of money. And so he's trying to figure out. What the fuck? And I don't even remember how he gets hooked up with Anne. Does she? Oh, she comes to his office pretending to be a reporter asking about what happened yeah, last night do, with her little glasses lane. on. You can tell and, she's a reporter because of the glasses. Oh, definitely. But she, she, you know, she doesn't need those glasses. So she takes them off. Listen, cuter with the glasses on. I mean, I agree. But, totally. Usually, I think that's the case. Yeah. But she pretends to be a, a, a newspaper woman. Yeah. And she comes in literally the first thing the next morning asking about it. And he's like, and her story's real lame. And he's a private eye. Yeah. And so he very quickly locks the door and calls her out and says, what is this get up? Like, what is your fucking story? Yeah. And ends up that she has this father who is remarried to this younger woman that she hates. Yeah. And Ellen. he's like blonde bombshell. Very sexy. Not as hot the as total Anne. femme fatale. Not I'm as more hot as Anne, Anne but she's the femme fatale in this. She's like the oozing sex one. Yeah. And to their Claire house. Trevor. This is Claire Trevor, yeah. Yeah, he goes to their house to... Because she's the one who owned the necklace. He yeah. finds out that that's like the connection is that apparently Marriott was trying to get her necklace back that had gotten stolen from her when she was out with her husband. And now she's like into jade, right? So He's a jade collector and she's into money. So doesn't <laughs> doesn't Helen then hire Marlo to go find the jade? Yes, she basically says, "Well, Lynn was trying to get it back for me, but it's worth like a hundred thousand dollars, but she had sent eight thousand with him to try to buy it back because she thought the people who stole it were stupid. So she says, Now you find it for me. Yeah. And also he's got this thing where he's like, and basically wants him to not do this. Like she's trying to call him off from the beginning. And he says to her, I have to because a man is dead because I didn't do my job. Like right. Marlo does have he a takes sense like three of, different job. He takes like four different jobs by the end of this movie. Oh yeah, all related with the same thing. He's <laughs> yeah. got the job with Moose. He's got the job with Helen. Anne tries to pay him to back the fuck off. He's trying to help fence some jewels or whatever. And I think he's like hired to be a bodyguard, or he's hired. He's not going to do it, but near the end, he's hired to help kill someone. Yes. Well, and he, at some point in here, talks to the cops. And the cops are like, listen, what were you doing with Marriott? And they are sort of thinking maybe he killed Marriott. And he's like, you guys know me. I didn't kill Marriott. He hired me. I'm pissed that he's dead. I also want to know who killed him. And they say, hey, just no matter what you do, don't go after this, like, Amthor. Amthor guy. Right. He didn't even know who Amthor was. Already <laughs> at this point, my brain is like... Doing somersaults. Yeah, we're all over the place. Uh, you can actually find this movie very easily online. 
I think you can. I saw. I found it on like Facebook. Someone's streaming it on their Facebook. Weird. But okay. also a good tip is that Internet Archive, especially for mm-hmm. these Hayes Code era movies, you can often find these movies. It's one on of the first there. things that come up when you search yeah, for so, this movie. Yeah, we might leave. This goes and. It's a pretty good movie, but it's going... We're definitely going to miss some things. And we definitely miss some things in The Big Sleep as well. But these are always movies well worth if you can go find them. Every movie we watch this month is a high recommend. And fairly easy to find. If I can find a nice link fairly easily, I will put it in the show notes. Yeah. Make sure you check on any episode to make sure there's one there. So not only does he find out that this little old man, Anne's dad, is feeble... He's married to this younger woman, Helen, and she is straight up hitting on Marlo. They're about to kiss when Anne comes in and gets all huffy. Yeah, yeah. And that's when he's saying to Helen, like, okay, well, how does this Amthor guy fit into this? Because I was told to stay away from him, so who the fuck is he? And she's like, oh, he's a... um, what is he? He like he like is like supposed to be like telling your future or some shit. Yeah, he's some kind of medium or a shrink hypnotist. Kind some, of also. Yeah, he's it's kind of vague, but he fucks with your head or. She said that to, he like helped her. He yeah. got in her head and helped her. Well, Moose shows up again attacking Marlo because Amthor convinced Moose that Marlo actually knew where Velma was. Yes, yes, because basically Amthor shows up at Helen's house and Marlo's like, this is too, this is like too much of a coincidence. And she's like, I swear I didn't know he was coming. And then he's like, yeah, come talk to me later. I'll find you or whatever. And then, yeah, the next thing he knows, he's like in Amthor's apartment with Moose like beating him up. Yeah. Or Moose beat him up and took him there. And then they, he ends up, Amthor's like, well, you must have the jade because you were there that night. And he's like, I don't fucking have it. And they end up throwing him in Into this room. The sanitarium. Dr. Soderberg. Yeah. Soderborg. I don't know. But I tried to look that name up because I was like, that's such a... You just pulled up Steven Soderberg over Yeah, over. pretty much. <laughs> that was who came up when I looked for Sonderberg. Soderberg. Sonderberg. Oh. Dr. Sonderberg Sanatorium, according to the Wikipedia recap I have pulled up. Yeah, Dr. Sonderberg <laughs> Sanatorium. And he's we, basically there for three days. We get hallucinatory uh, trip scenes here. Next thing I remember, I was going somewhere. It was not my idea. The rest of it was a crazy, coked up dream. I had never been there before. Yeah, Which is kind of fun to see in a movie from 1944. It was so well done because there was the hallucinatory, there was some more trippy, like, dreamy, weird, crazy shit. And he, oh, every time he gets hit in the head, he says that a black hole is opening up. It happens like three times. Yeah, CT, his brain is going gray from CTE His damage. brain is dying. He wakes up all drugged out in this bed where he's like tied up and stuff. And they come in and give him more shots. And he's talking about how there's cobwebs. And they have a filter over the camera. Yeah. And I, 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 I want love, this to I have been practical. Part, yeah. I did too. I mean, who knows? Because it doesn't really move. So I really wonder, did they like straight up drape something over the camera? Because I don't know how Maybe. else they would do it. Because the I whole screen some is like. Double exposure kind of stuff. Back Maybe then. they did. Um, but yeah, the whole screen is like. Kind of cobwebby and fuzzy, like we're looking through cobwebs. Yeah, yeah. I loved that. Part. It's it, it it's kind of my favorite part of the movie. I just it was just one because the plot's like you're kind of trying to roll with this plot. And admittedly, I was very tired when I was watching the movie. <laughs> but like that part was just kind of cool to just take in. I really enjoyed it. I did too. You don't see that kind of a scene very much. No, in movies from this time. And then I especially love the part where he's like, I have to. Get out of here. Because everything in his body wants to lay back down. And he's like, oh, I should go back to sleep. Nope, I have to walk. And he starts, like, walking and walking. He finds his clothes. He gets dressed. He gets to where he thinks he's, like, okay enough. And he takes a spring out of the mattress. And he yells because he knows if he yells help, they'll come in because they'll want to give him more medicine. Or ask him if he's ready to tell him where the jade is, which he really doesn't know. And they come in and he stabs the orderly he, guy. Like he clocks him in the dome or something. Or. With a spring, with a metal spring. Is it Moose around? 
as not well. at this point he w- like no but, but he ends but he does encounter moose and is like yeah he tricked you you dumbass at some point he shows moose the photo of velma that's velma it's as always velma doesn't it i don't like nobody to kill with me oh nobody's kidding with you somebody's kidding with me i thought that it was a phony i had to make sure i was meant to nip up anybody who started looking for velma she wasn't like that i tell you how she was cute Okay, okay, she was as cute as a cat pistol. Well, she's still cute. Now, do you want to see her before you go away, or don't you? And Moose is like, why are you fucking with me? Yeah, I don't know who that That's is. That's not Velma. And he's like, mm, I was beginning to, to wonder. He's like, everyone is fucking with you, Moose. And then Moose, like, helps him get a cab. And he puts him in a cab, and Marlo goes to Anne's house. Anne has moved out of the house from her dad and Helen. And she's living in an apartment. And he's like, you got to feed me and give me some alcohol. And she's pissed because she hasn't seen him for three days. And he's like, I've been drugged up (laughs) because of your stepmother. And all of a sudden, the door, someone knocks at the door and it's the police. Because he's already won't go home because the police are watching his apartment. But they come there. I don't even remember the conversation. He basically tells them how he's been drugged up for three days because of Amthor. And he gives them Sonderberg. And then the police leave again. And he and Anne go see her dad. Yeah, who, there's some about a rental as well. Yeah, oh, the cops tip him off about the rental, and they go to the rental to see if what they can find, and guess who's there? Helen. Helen. We discover, right, that who the killer is. Helen killed Marriott. She's the one that beat him to death. Yeah. Th- it's, but it it's was Anne that shined the flashlight when he woke up. That yeah, was Anne, so, right? Yeah, so, so there's like two times. He goes with Anne to the house, and she gets pissed. And she leaves to go tell her dad that she's okay. And then this is when Helen just lays the whole thing out. So basically, and some of this I didn't get until I read the recap. But basically, the whole thing was triggered as soon as he went looking for her at Florian's house. At Jesse Florian's house. That phone call was to Helen. And that's when immediately Helen set up this whole thing. Yeah, There was no no stolen jade necklace. Her shit wasn't even stolen. It wasn't stolen. She had it the whole time. She set them up. And the goal was to kill Marlo. The whole thing. She sent Lynn to get Marlo to go do this job so they could kill Lynn Marriott. So they could kill Marlo because they didn't want him to find her. And so it's all tied in together, like Amthorpe and all these guys have known her for a long time, and she's got some serious trouble in her past. And this is when, you know, we know and Marlo has figured out that this girl's Velma. Yeah. This is how this is tied together. It seemingly makes no sense that Moose (laughs) is involved in any of this at all, except that apparently back in the day, he took the rap for something she did, and Amthorpe and Lynn knew what she did and were blackmailing her. Yeah. And Amthorpe was, since he was blackmailing her, she wanted them all dead. She was just trying to kill everybody. What a mess. Such a mess. And she then says to Marlo, you gotta help me kill Amthorpe. He goes to Amthorpe. Amthorpe's dead? Yeah. So he goes to Moose and he's like, Moose, lay low until tomorrow night. I got your girl. I'm going to take you to her. And then everything kind of goes to shit. Yeah, everyone's pulling guns. Helen's going to about to kill Marlo because he tells her Amthorpe's dead. And she's like, well, then you're right. the last person. And so then she's husband, ready to kill. And her husband shoots her. husband her. and Anne come in and he basically, she's like, you told him. And he's like, no, I came here because I was fucking worried about you. Her husband shoots her. He's like so heartbroken right. and she's like such a bad person that he shoots her. Moose hears the gunshot. And comes in. Comes in. Sees her dead. And then there's this f- argument between him dude. and the old man. And the old man goes to fire the gun and Marlo goes to try to stop it. And that's what happens to his eyes. His eyes yeah, get burnt. The flash burns his eyes and that's why he's bandaged. And then we just hear like some screaming and, and gunshots. Everything goes dark again. Wrapping up the explanation to the police. Then we go back in there and they say, well, you know, the two guys shot each other. So, yeah. So he leaves and Anne's waiting on him and it's like. Also, the whole time he's been asking about her. He keeps calling her the kid. He's like, what happened to the kid? He does at the beginning ask, too. Every time we see him, he's asking, like, is the kid okay? Did the kid get hurt? And they won't really answer anything. And then you realize that she's been in the room the entire time. Oh, and he's being real And she's over there, like, shaking her head like that is what happened. And so she corroborated. And he's like, so, and they're like, well, you can go. And he's like, what, somebody, somebody backed me up? Who backed Mm -hmm. me up? Was it the kid? Is the kid okay? And they're not answering him. And she's like, shh, to the cops. 
She sneaks out of the whole building with them. He can't see shit. Put him in the cab and she's like, no, I go, you stay here. So she like tells the copper to stay. She gets in the cab and that's when he smells her perfume and he says, hey, uh, Lieutenant, what the fuck? He's Daredevil now. You, uh, it's been a long time since I kissed anybody. You want to give yeah. me a kiss? And that's when she realizes he knows who she is. So we're establishing here that, you know, Philip Marlowe, he, he does end up with a girl at the end of each story, but by the next one, they're they're gone. We don't know what happened. He's a player, dude. He can't Lacey settle Sh- down. Lacey Chabert Hallmark movies are kind of like this as well. <laughs> yeah. He's getting new dick at the beginning of every movie, and it is the same person. <laughs> According to you. So that's uh, Murder My Sweet, directed by Edward Dimitrik, uh, starring Dick Powell, Claire, Trevor, and Shirley Otto, Kruger, and Mike Mazurki. A pretty good movie, no less confusing, but still fun. And Shirley retired after this movie. Oh, wow. She was so young. I know. I don't know why. She had two kids, but I don't know if that's why she quit. But she, she did. She just went domestic. She went trad, full trad. So we're going to give it one through five each combined for best out of ten. What do you give Murder My Sweet? I think it's a solid four for me. Well, I gave The Big Sleep 3.75 because of the muddled uh, plot, right? Mm-hmm. But this, And maybe that was a little low. You know, in my mind, I could easily go up to a four. But I wouldn't say this one had its own cool stuff. Mm-hmm. It's kind of not fair to, to only compare them. Because I did, there were things I really liked about this one. I mean, it's also hard not to because they're from the same dude. A 3.5 and up is still a good score. Absolutely. But sometimes we've been going so high because we've been watching such quality movies. Is that, like, when you gave Double Indemnity 4.25, I was like, what? Because I thought it was so I perfect. I loved that one. But, like, a 4.25 is a fucking great score. Yeah. So we just get all, like, lopsided here. But I think this movie is a, a worthy 3.5. I'm going to say 3.75. So that's that's a, my final answer. So that's a seven point two five. Did you give Double Indemnity a five? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I well, love that. Well, and I gave movie. it a. I did too. But you know, what's a bad one? I can't think of a bad one. I mean, this one might end up being one of our lowest. Actually, we'll see because um, the Lady in the Lake kind of has like a a gimmick concept to it. Ooh, uh, yeah, I'm interested and, in and, that. Uh, we'll see how that pans out. I do think our best. You know what? I'm going to bring mine up back up to a 3.75. A very respectable 7.5. Murder. Let me. I forgot to put the D in there. (laughs) Murder. My Sweet by Edward Dimitri, 1944. Rests comfortably between Miracle on 34th Street and Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. (laughs) It's a B plus. I would say anything B and up is pretty much a recommend. Absolutely. We got another one tomorrow. I forget because they're all scheduled ahead, but... Yeah, all classic film noir, all right? <laughs> so check the show notes for links, other places to find us. Subscribe to the channel. I'd appreciate that. Uh, leave a comment, a correction, any fun facts. What is your favorite Marlowe adaptation? And uh, mm. well, let's suppose, and I'm, I'm stealing this from um, Double Indemnity, our supposing, where we end the episode. So supposing we get out of here. Supposing we do. Supposing we do.